Okay, this demonstration talks about using transparent base added to your ink to make it more light, to make a tint, rather than adding white. Later on, I'll do a demonstration also showing you how we could add white. But I prefer to use transparent base whenever possible because it allows the colors that you print previously to show through. Whereas if you add white to your inks, it makes it more opaque and it also makes it more of a pastel color, which um, may or may not work with some of your imagery. So whenever possible, I would recommend using the transparent base instead of white to allow your colors to remain more intense. So this is uh, ink made by Akua and the medium that they use is soy oil. They call it water-based ink, but it really does not clean up like you would think tempera paint or some other um, watercolors would clean up. So you should not just like take this to the sink and try to rinse it out. It's like trying to rinse out a jar of peanut butter. You really should just wipe up as much as you can with a rag when it comes time to clean it up rather than um, trying to add a lot of water to it. I'm going to be using transparent base as my starting color. We're working on a, on a reduction print and we recommend that we start with our lightest color first. So I'm going to put down, let's say two times as much transparent base as I plan to add the pigment. And our pigments are very concentrated. I'm using a scrap of mat board here so that I don't have to constantly clean up my um, putty knife. All right, this is ultramarine blue. I thought I had some black, but um, I think the blue will show up pretty well. Usually you don't want to cross contaminate your colors by dipping a piece of mat board that has a different color on it. The transparent base really won't hurt any of your colors, but it's a good policy to just get in the habit of starting with a fresh piece of mat board or a clean putty knife each time you mix. So I'm planning to add just a tiny bit of blue. Again, this is very highly pigmented ink, and so it just takes a touch. And um, I might even not even put the rest of that on there. So I prefer to pre-mix the ink before I start rolling the roller across it. It keeps your roller a little bit cleaner. It prevents the ink from getting all over the place. Now this still appears really dark, but as we roll it out, we'll see that there's so much transparent base in there that the, the white of the paper really is going to show through. So I try to spread out the ink about the same width as my roller and there's no need on in spreading it out over your whole inking slab. As an inking surface today we have these really inexpensive cutting mats that I found at the dollar store. Uh, normally I prefer to ink up on a glass slab. If you have it that would be better. I'm going to tape it down just so it's not slipping around. It's kind of a lightweight mat and I've chosen the shiny side of the mat rather than the matte side in order to make cleanup a little bit easier. So this roller is from Graphic Chemical. It's similar to the speedball rollers that some of you may have. Uh, if you notice when I squeeze it, there's quite a bit of give to this. And that's when you talk about the hardness of a roller, you're referring to the durometer. These rollers, I'm guessing are around 30 durometer. The lower the number gets, the softer the rubber is, which means that if you press hard on the block, you can press that roller down into the grain of the wood a little bit more, which can be a problem with over inking if you're not careful, but it also can allow you to get ink onto areas of a block that may not be perfectly level. So the soft brayers are usually recommended for kind of beginning level printmaker or blocks that may not be absolutely flat. There are rollers that have a harder durometer. This one is a little bit more firm. It's not quite as squishy. And I'm guessing this might be closer to like a 60 or 70 durometer um, roller. It's a little bit harder to get all of the details to ink with this one, but it's a pretty good quality roller as well. All right, this one also you might notice has a little kickstand here. So you don't want to be dragging this through your ink. When you, when you go to roll, um, flip it over so that this side of the roller is down. Some people will even hold the handle straight up and down as they're inking. So as you start to distribute the ink, you want to lift up the roller a couple of times so that ink gets distributed on the whole roller. Notice how I'm not just going out and back, out and back without lifting it. Um, I have to pick it up, let it go about a quarter of a turn and spread it out. So this is too much ink, I think. Um, if you find that you have too much ink, 
you can roll it out on a scrap of newspaper, or you can try to kind of scrape up the extra ink off to the side of the inking slab, and then um, roll out again so it spreads a little bit more thinly. And then the faster you go, I usually try to keep that ink slab sort of a square shape. So you're rolling in both directions. Wait, um, finish that down again. And again, this is a little bit heavy, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, roll this onto the block. So this is the first color that we had planned to print. And the first time I start to roll across, I use a very light pressure, just the weight of the roller. I don't want to be pressing the ink down into those crevices. And I'm really looking a lot at how much shine is on the block. So you want to get all the way to the corners. I'm trying not to drop the roller off the edge of the block. Then I end up getting ink on the inking slab and under the block. I also want to point out that I'm I am not locking my printing block in my printing jig when I'm inking it. Then um, you're going to end up getting ink all over the place, and then your borders of your printing paper get ink on them as well. So never ink your block while it's in your printing jig. If you want to make a separate jig for inking, that's another um, thing you could do. And in that case, I would keep the jig height lower than the block so that the roller doesn't roll across your jig. Okay, I'm trying not to put my fingers on the top of the block, but I do need to get all the way to the corners. So one, one way to avoid dropping off the side of the block is to angle the brayer so that when you approach the corner, you're not, you're not dropping off like this. You stay on the block until you're clear, clear out to the corner of the block. All right, so this seems really, like a pretty thin layer of ink, but I'd prefer that you use too little ink on these first colors than to overdo it and apply the ink too heavily. We don't want ink to get down into our lowered areas of the block. And since we're hand printing, we can use quite a bit of pressure to catch areas that might be a little bit low um, and aren't picking up ink as well. So I think this is a pretty good amount of coverage. We're going to um, move now to printing this block.